Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today we're back with the Class A amplifier, the 20 watt guy. And it is 20 watts. It's up to 20 watts now. I think this is, shoot, is this the fourth or fifth video in the series? I got a playlist down below, a link to it. So check them out if you haven't seen them. In this video, what I want to do is I want to do the phase gain plot at 1 watt and 20 watts so we can see how flat or how unflat it might be. If if we do see something happen at 20 watts, maybe we'll drop it down and see where it falls apart. Hopefully it looks good at 20 watts. We've looked at it at 1 watt earlier, but now that we've made the changes, let's check that out again. And the other thing I want to do is do the THD measurements and do those also at 1 watt. We did it before 1 watt, 1 kilohertz. But let's repeat that, see if we've changed anything with, you know, setting this up. And then we'll check it at 20 watts, 1K. And then we'll do some other higher frequencies and lower frequencies too. Just kind of do some corner cases, make sure it looks good across the spectrum, you know. And what else? Oh, the other thing, I have this thermocouple, this nice little, uh, I think this is a fluke thermocouple I've had forever. But it's nice because it has a nice flat surface and I can take some measurements on the heat sink. And what I can do is when I apply power, I can watch the temperature and see how fast it rises and see how hot it gets. I know that it gets hot enough that if I just let it sit for too many minutes, I, and I haven't really tracked how much time that takes, but I start seeing the bias current dropping. So I know that's when it's too hot. So maybe we'll, uh, we'll see how long, we'll, 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 we'll do some temperature measurements anyway. Now this is just a heat spreader that we're taking. Just just chunk of metal, kind of thick here, thinner up here, and spreads out the heat. And what will happen is I took the side of the box off. This is gonna go on one side, and then the other board will go on the other side. And so they'll be mounted like that. So this big thick chunk has four mounting screws across the bottom, and we'll just mount it like that. And we'll see how well this heat sink uh keeps it cool hopefully it does uh this guy i took some measurements about an inch and a quarter i think it was long in the fins and four and a half inches this dimension i believe it was anyway i did some uh math and it came out to about 250 just over 250 square inches surface area and then there's probably another 50 or so on the back so yeah there's at least 300 square inches of surface area I think there's a rule of thumb for how many, uh, you know, for, let's see, what is it? There's a rule of thumb for how many square inches of surface area you need per watt. I think there is. Uh, if you guys know it, let me know. Or what's your rule of thumb? So we'll test this on that next video. In this video, we'll just see how hot it gets sitting here on the bench, okay? And how long I can run it before I have to turn it off. And we'll do it at 1 watt and at 20 watts, too, to see what difference, if any. Okay? All right. So, hey, let's get testing. Okay, guys, a little bit about the setup. Here's the amplifier board, the big old metal uh, heat spreader on this thing. And what I want to do first is run this at 1 watt and then run it at 20 watts. And take the time it takes to, say, get to 60C, maybe. And I'll use this thermocouple, this guy I got from Fluke a long time ago. Got a couple of these. They're, they're real nice because when you're doing a quick test, it's just you can just take an accurate reading, just moving it around. Um, the thermal cameras are great for getting the spread and finding hot spots. But to get more you know, precise measurements you know, right on so you don't have to worry about reflective surfaces, I'm just going to use this for now. Okay, and I, I just want to see what the temperature rise is there versus when I put it on the heat sink. You know, it, like this guy will be, he's not mounted right now either, but he'll be mounted like that on this. And then we'll measure this in the next video when I get the box together. And we'll see, you know, we'll see how much it helps. But I, I want to see. Uh, the difference right now between one, 1 watt and 20 watts and see how long it takes this guy to get hot. We got our 200 watt 8 ohm resistor here. We got our current probe measuring the current there. We got differential probes measuring the voltage out right here. Also the THD meter connected. 
I've got the input, uh, I got the wave, this Unity generator right here at the input, along with the differential probes at the input as well. And so, yeah, I've got everything all connected up. The plus minus voltage rails with the kind of star ground I'm using right here for everything. And I think we're ready to dial it up and get one watt going with one kilohertz just to, to get a temperature measurement. And we're going to do it when it's nice and cold here. Let me show you the rest of the setup. Here's the mix sig scope that everything's tied into, the two differential probes and the current probe. And I'll be using this amp probe with the temperature uh, input. It has, you can do two, which is really nice, but I'm just going to do the one for now. And it's on Celsius. There's the Fahrenheit. So you can see the ambient temperature. And then we'll use the FLIR for reading the voltage right here, the card. Okay? Be reading right here, the card, so that we can take into account any losses we get from the power supply that's sitting up here, this dual output power supply. Okay? It's turned off because fan's noisy. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I think we're ready to go. Uh, yeah, this is different. We've got the Pentec differential probe at the input, and at the output, we have one of these mix sigs. Okay, we got this one right here, times 10 setting, and there's the current probe amplifier for this guy right here. Okay, let's set it up for one watt and see how long it takes. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take up power, and you'll see the voltage come up right here. Taking all the way to the max, 31.6, plus minus 31.6, and plus minus 1.6 amps, or 1.6 amps on each rail. Okay, now, uh, got our temperature probe, I got my time started, and I'll just take readings. Let me take one right now. Started off at around 15C, Look, it's already up to 24C, 27. All right, we're getting close to 60C, and it's only been about a minute and a half. Now, if I hold it right up close to the transistors right up here, it's a little bit hotter than if I move it back here to the back of the heat sink. See, it drops just a couple degrees. Eventually, the heat sink will all stabilize, you know, but just uh, as it increases, it's increasing quick enough that there is some, you know, difference across the heat sink. If I come over here to the corner, yeah, it's all becoming pretty close to the same temperature. But you can see it is a few degrees hotter if I get real close to the transistors. Okay, we're at 64C, and I'm real close to the transistors. Now, if I go on top of one of them, now that's, look, 76C, right? 77. Okay, now I'll come right off to the next that transistor. It's about 10 degree change uh, from, you know, the, so that thermal pad, I don't know. I wonder if it could be improved because that seems like, well, and actually, if I could come down here closer to the metal tab up here, I don't know if I can get enough of the thermocouple on there. Okay, 58, and if I come right off to the side, yeah, I think it's, it's difficult. Look at that, 82 degrees on top, and over here, Well, yeah, that mic, uh, I don't know if there's enough thermal paste. I don't know. It's, it's okay, but it's not great. Okay, so let's go ahead and shut it down. Okay, I'm going to take it. It's at three minutes. I'll go four minutes. Well, I don't know if I'm going to. It's ADC there almost. Yeah, it's about 10 degrees difference. So 89, we're four minutes in. 
and about 81 there. Okay, so I'm gonna shut down, let it cool off. I'll take one of my resistors and put it right there and let it help cool that heat sink down. Okay guys, I have it set up for the signal for max power, so I'm gonna bring up the voltage. You can see it go from square wave up and all right, I had to lower the signal just a touch. Uh, it's just a little over 20 watts, but yeah, there we go. Let's see how fast we're heating up. Okay, we'll give it a couple minutes and then I'll take the temperature. All right, so it's been a couple minutes. And temperature has been increasing slowly go on top of the transistor we'll go to four minutes like we did before to see what we get we're up to 65 you know after 60 degrees it's kind of too hot to touch very long with your fingers yeah it's going up very slowly now we're at three minutes. Okay, guys, we're at four minutes and temperature on the transistor, let's say 78. It's gone up really slow. And right off the side, it's about only five degrees difference because. The thermal, when the temperature goes up slow, things are able to track a little bit better. You don't get the thermal uh, time difference, you know, the thermal lag, they call it, between, like, let's say, a hot spot and the heat sink. Okay, now we're up to 80. It's been four, almost going into five minutes. Yeah, so there's only about five degrees difference between them now and we're approaching five minutes all right okay guys i turned it off about a minute turned it back on and put it down to one watt again and the temperature is already hustling past 80 degrees so more efficient at full power output all right, guys, I got the power on. I'm just cranking up the voltage now. Okay, we got full voltage. Let's look at distortion. Uh, right now, we're looking at 1 kilohertz. Now, the Unity generator had 0 0.02 at the input, so we're only adding about 0 0.01. That's pretty darn good. That's 1K, 1 watt. Let's drop down to 500 hertz. Let's go down to... Okay, there we go, 500. And, wow, if anything, it dropped a little bit. Okay, let's go down to 100 hertz. There's 100. Yeah, we're, you know, we went up just a little bit. We're up to 0.1 now. Okay, there's 50, 60 hertz. Okay, let's go back up. Seems like right about there, it's 90. You know, right around 100 hertz is uh, kind of a worst case, it seems like. Here, let me, take the generator reading again just to make sure all right yeah there's a generator reading right there okay now we'll go back to the output yeah it's not really adding much right okay I only took the generator readings at 1k let me go back up again I didn't go down that far okay going back up we're at 1 kilohertz let's go to 5 there's five kilohertz. Okay, 0.03, I'll go back to the generator input. Wow, look at that, there's a generator input. 0.0356 or something. And there's the output. Jeez, I mean, I think it's within a tolerance there. Okay, I'm gonna go to 10K, there's 10K. Okay, we'll let it settle a little bit. 0.029. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the generator input. Man. I think that is pretty hard to read. Okay, this is all at one watt, right? Let's go to 20K. Okay, 
Okay, there's 20K, 0.034. That's generator input. Now let's go to the output. 0.035. Man, I'll tell you what, that's looking pretty darn good. Okay, let's crank up the power. Okay, guys, that's 20 watts at 20 kilohertz. And we have a little distortion there, 0.27. Let me go to the input. I think it's going to be low. Yeah, 0.025. So we're it's mostly at the output here. Okay, now I'm just going to drop in power a little bit just to see uh, where we have to go. Okay, there we go. Let's drop down to 0.1 basically. Okay, that's at uh, 9.8 volts RMS out. So, yeah, it's, it's over 8 watts. But that's about half power probably. So, yeah, we, we got a little distortion at 20 watts there. Let's go back up. Well, let's go a little bit lower and see what happens. Yeah, it, start, it really just starts dropping off. So, let's go back up to full power. Okay, there's full power, about 0.27. 20 watts, 20K. Okay, let's drop the frequency. Okay, that's 10K, and that looks a lot better. So, it's just right there at the high frequency. Let's go to the input again. Okay, 0.027, go back to the output, output, yeah, about 0.0, yeah, it's less than 0.02 rise, so that's 10K, let's go down to 5K, yeah, right there's 6, 5K, right there, and 0.022, if I go to the input, it's 0.05, let's go back to the output, wow, that's interesting. Okay, at the input, I see about 0.05, and at the output, 0.02. That's interesting. Seems like it actually dropped. Okay, that's a 5K. Let's go down to 1K. Okay, there's 1K, and 0.016 or something. Yeah, it, it goes up a little bit at the input, 0.02 again. Boy, that is kind of interesting. Okay, 0.01. Now I'll go down to 500 hertz. Okay, there's 500 hertz. 0.03 at the output. At the input. Wow, the input's really low. That's 500 hertz. And here's the output. 0.03. Okay, let's go down 100 hertz. 0.15, let's go to the input. Okay, 0.03. And we'll go down to 20 hertz. Okay, there's 20 hertz, 0.6. It increased 0.6, let's go to the input. Okay, the input's 0.02, I guess. Let's go back to the output. Okay, 0.6. Okay, I'm gonna drop the power again a little bit and see what happens. Boy, all I do is go one click and it drops down to 0.25. That is about 11 and a half volts RMS. And now we're about seven, well, 6.8 volts RMS. And we're about 6.4 volts RMS right there. And if I go down to that, that's, that's about one watt. So. All right, so that kind of takes us around the park there, uh, the distortions. All right, let's look at the bandwidth, phase gain. All right, guys, uh, what I'm gonna do is bring this up until we see some clipping. Now, let me just tell you, the yellow one's channel one, five volts per division, that's the output. Channel two's the input, 200 millivolts per division. And so we're gonna increase it until we see some clipping. Okay, there's 510 millivolts peak to peak. And then there's where it clips. So we're gonna just drop it right there. And that's where we get our max power. That's where we get our 20 watts. So that's 510. And then if we go down here, 110, about two point, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna just say 110 is pretty close to one watt. Okay, so 110 to 510. All right, guys, so I'm going to go to the Applications menu, and that's the FRA analysis right there. So we'll go to that, select that, select it again. Okay, now let's do the setup, input, 
is channel 2 outputs channel 1 the gain is output divided by input so channel 1 divided by 2 generator setup okay 20 Hertz I can't go lower than 20 it starts at 20 and 100 kilohertz that that'll give us a nice you know see how flat it is and amplitude let's change that to 110 okay that'll be about our one watt condition all right so let's just run that and up here you know you'll see the output and the input waveforms and the scope every time it changes frequency it adjusts the vertical amplitude up here it also auto scales the gain in the phase look at the gain look how flat and the phase looks flat through here too it kind of had a it changed something here real low frequencies but wow yeah that looks great okay here let's play with that alright so what we we'll do is go to the analyze and then we can change our scales here so that we can kind of uh, you know just get a nice even number over here and maybe get a zero over here so let's see body scale gain offsets 29 so yeah if we go to 30 I think that'll give us a nice even number and we're 5 dBs per so there's 30 and we're just yeah the gain looks like it's about 31 probably that looks good and we're starting off at uh, you know I mean look at the phase but I mean look at the gain first of all the gain is just flat all the way through there that's just yeah one watt man it just goes way out there now the phase uh, this is here let's we're gonna change the phase too weren't we let's put that on an even numbers 15 db so let's go to 30 I think that'll give us a nice even number okay there's zero dBs right there Wow I mean it, it it's 15 here so it's dropping 15 and dropping 15 out here at about geez at 20k it's only dropped about 10 maybe so yeah that's pretty darn flat too and 610 whoops let's drop that down to 510 let's start we'll do the 20 watt equivalent here okay so now let's just run this thing turned on the power rails okay here we go and up here you'll see the input and output signal as it and it'll auto uh, calibrate each time and it auto scales the gain and the phase as well wow that gain that blue one is so flat now look there's 20 kilohertz right there and it went right out to 20k and then it rolled off so uh, here let's set this up and what I'll do is um, let's go to analyze and we're going to change the grid here to scale for the body plot and we're going to change the gain right now it's 5 dBs per decade that's fine but uh, the offsets 24 let's make that where we get a zero over here we'll go to 20 20 dB offset okay so 20 dB is right here in the center I guess we don't get a zero because we're at 5 dBs per so we're just about 31 dB something like that and look how flat that is right it goes it starts at 20 Hertz right because I can't go to 10 it, the scope starts at 20 which is good but look how flat that is and then it's really flat out to 20 and then rolls off and that's about 20 dB per decade see a decade would be we let's say 20k and then 200k is over here and this is 5 10 15 20 so you can imagine by the time it falls over here it's 20 dbs per decade now the phase let's do the same thing let's get uh phase is 15 degrees per pretty high resolution let's change and get a zero on the phase right Okay, so there's a zero right there so look at that it's real close I mean it's only about 15 degrees here on the low side and then at 20k it's about 15 again so that's pretty darn good 
All right, guys, so what do you think? Uh, that doesn't look too bad. Hey, before we uh, talk more about this and what we just did, uh, let me just talk about the next video. The next video, what I want to do is mount this on the heat sink that's going to be put on. This is the side of the box. Uh, each one of these will be mounted to one side. Okay, so I mount uh, this to the side of the box, and so that way we can see how the temperature stabilizes, and then we can set the bias current. I've gone through this circuit, and I've almost got the schematic. So I'll get the schematic for this, and we'll set up the bias, and I'll explain how we're going to set up that, okay, for the Class A. And that kind of sets up the efficiency, how much power we're dissipating when it's just idling. And efficiency is always going to be better at higher power outputs because it's always going to be putting out power. <laughs> and so if it's just sitting there only putting out one watt, the efficiency is going to be pretty terrible. At max power out, it's probably going to be around 25-30%, something like that. Now, you know, one of the things that uh, that depends on is how much voltage is on the rails. This thing, I've been playing around with this. I can drop the voltage down to 29 volts, and at 29 volts, we don't clip. So, when we put our transformer on, right now I'm powering it up with this guy. When we put our transformer on, there's going to be some ripple voltage on the transformer output, right? So we want to account for that and make sure that that doesn't dip down below 29 volts so we don't get any clipping there. And I have a couple different transformers. I think one of these two guys will work. And I think this one might do it. So we might start off with this one. And then we'll go to this to see if we need to, okay? So... What we'll do is we'll go through the schematic, set the bias, and do it with uh, a real transform, real AC power supply this time. All right. So, uh, all right. So now in this video, we saw the THD. It looked pretty good. It looked really good in some places, and at the extreme ends, at the high power, it was about the worst. But still, not bad, I don't think. And you know, it did heat up pretty fast within a couple of minutes. It was already getting hot enough where the bias, you know, this transistor here was dropping the bias current. And so we got to get it on a real heat sink so we can see how that stabilizes. The other thing is the Bode plot. It looked really good, 1 watt and uh, 20 watts. So it looked great on both of those. So I think that was fine. And so the bandwidth looks good if we set up the bias. The distortion looks good. This thing should be a good amp. So we just have to put it in the box, get a transformer on it, rectifier, and get this thing buttoned up. So thanks for watching, and I want to thank my patrons. And by the way, you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. <laughs> and I want to thank all you guys for watching the videos and giving me all your comments and remarks and all that. That's been great. And keep them coming and give a thumbs up the video if you like it. And if you want to see me finish putting this in a box. I'm trying to button this up for a friend so I can get it ready. And it's been taking a little longer than I wanted it to. But yeah, if you want to see the rest of it, let me know. Okay? Alright. Hey, thanks guys. And give me your comments. And your, and, uh, I want to show you a schematic. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys want to see. And we'll see you next time. All right, thanks for watching.